Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, Shinrin, Yoku, and Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Sunday, November 12th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. The seismic swarm, the seismic crisis on Iceland continues as we are waiting for an imminent eruption. We've got eyes on the ground and the activity is continuing as an entire town has been evacuated. Keep calm, it's boom time. The first atmospheric river storm of the season is targeting California next week. Heavy snow coming, well, just about everywhere. Wait for the full forecast. Warm temperatures across the plains currently, but that will change. Widespread showers along the Gulf Coast currently. Winter storm in Alaska. Widespread, occasionally heavy showers will bring localized flash flooding across southeast Texas into Louisiana. Meanwhile, a storm continues to bring high winds, heavy record-breaking snow, blowing snow and blizzard conditions, high surf and minor coastal flooding to western and northern Alaska. It's certainly a November to remember. Here's the GFS model. We can see some of the moisture coming into the Pacific Northwest, and we can also see that situation down on the Gulf Coast. We'll be continuing through midweek at least, and then we're going to have some moisture coming into California. So that's some good news. Now take a look at this nor'easter that develops here next Friday into Saturday. That's going to bring some snow to New England. How much snow? Well, let's take a look at the total snowfall and move it through. Here's your Monday through Tuesday morning. Snow in Washington, Montana, and some snow in the Northeast. Here is Wednesday through Thursday. Snow in Montana, and then up through Central Canada. Through the weekend here, Saturday and Sunday, we could see some more activity in the Northeast and another system early in the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, moving down into the Pacific Northwest. We'll bring snow across the northern tier of the U.S. Here are the models out through the end of November. Again, for the Northeast, a November to remember, with record snow in British Columbia as well. Those are the models. Now, Mount St. Helens hasn't been this active since it last erupted. We reported on over 700 earthquakes in the last few months. Now, the good news is the activity is curtailing. It is, you know, coming down a little bit, but we still have 155 earthquakes in the last 30 days here. So we're keeping a close eye on Mount St. Helens for you. As we take a look at the worldwide seismic update, very quiet across the globe which is good news as the Reykjanes volcano eruption coming likely in the next few days. Not much has changed since yesterday. The likelihood of new volcanic eruption near the town of Grindavik in the coming days remains very high. The Iceland Met Office detected 1,000 earthquakes in the 15-kilometer-long area where the magmatic intrusion under the surface is believed to be. According to the latest models, it is 10 to 15 kilometers long and located just northwest of Grindavik, and most Icelandic press refer to it as a magma tunnel, although it's probably better imagined as a long, roughly vertical sheet-shaped area filled with fresh magma that has intruded during the intense earthquake swarm over the last few days. This would be the intrusion here starting about three days ago, the major one in Grindavik, and now it is quieting down, which is indicative of what happens prior to the magma reaching the surface. The rocks are all cracked already. The magma is in place, and it's just seeking a way to get to the surface. Now, there is also breaking news. There is a drone ban for the entire region where the eruption may occur here. And I don't know why that is. It's maybe so that the authorities can get some of the first visuals. There are uh, several live streams that are set up around the uh, eruption, potential eruption site. So we do have good coverage. As the seismic swarm, you can see it here over the last 48 hours, this is reducing a bit. This is what happened during the last Fisher eruption. The activity will concentrate on where the magma is coming up. The amount of seismicity will reduce and then the eruption will commence. Now, there is significant likelihood of a volcanic eruption in the coming days. We cannot stress this enough. Around 1,000 earthquakes within the dike boundaries from midnight. The models show a 15-kilometer-long magma intrusion located northwest of Grindavik. And here you can see 
uh, on this map here, let's just blow that up, the dike intrusion region. So the volcano can erupt anywhere along this dike. If it erupts down here, we get free magmatic activity where we get lava interacting with seawater, and that could be very violent and explosive. If it happens anywhere near Grindavik here, that could lead to certain destruction of a town of thousands of people. If it happens up north here, this is the best case scenario. It will take the most amount of time to affect things like the Blue Lagoon and other things. So hopefully the eruption happens up in the northern portion of the dike. It is not looking like that is actually the case, which is bad news. Now, since the morning of November 11th, seismic activity related to the magma intrusion remains fairly constant. And since midnight November 12th, around 1,000 earthquakes have re been recorded within the dike. All of them have been below magnitude 3. Uh, the most seismic activity has been located along the region just north of Grindavik, which is the worst case scenario. That could affect all things. The Blue Lagoon, the power plant, and the town of Grindavik. GPS measurements covering the past 24 hours show that deformation associated with the dike intrusion that formed on Friday, November 10th has slowed. This can be an indication that magma is moving closer to the surface and new models will be run as soon as data comes up into the model. So, bad news as residents of volcano threatened Icelandic town allowed brief visit to home. People of Grindavik, where eruptions could happen within hours, were permitted five minutes to collect pets and essentials after the main evacuation. That's good news. Some of the more than 3,000 residents evacuated from an Icelandic fishing town have been allowed to return briefly to their homes to collect pets and essential belongings as experts warn that the volcano could erupt within days or even hours. We're keeping a close eye on that with multiple live streams around the region and still nothing yet. But thousands of people are interested as they are currently have their eyes on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Now some articles coming out from CNN. Humanity just lived through the hottest 12 months in 125,000 years. Holy macaroni. Now the hottest in 125,000 years, according to EU scientists, as if cavemen could measure the temperature to a tenth of a degree, says Joe Nova. And I couldn't agree more. Think for a minute just how stupid this claim is that no single year, not one, in the last 125,000 years was warmer than the last 12 months. In fact, cavemen are rolling in their graves. It's virtually certain, said two journalists at Reuters, it was broken by 0.4 degrees. Now, Homo sapiens have had satellite data for just 44 years which only leaves 124,956 years of extrapolation to guess at the rest. That is how ridiculous this claim is. And it is quite possible that during the medieval warming, the Roman warming, the Minoan warming, and even back 8,000 years ago, it was warmer than today. So this claim is complete garbage and is being puppeted by... All across mainstream media, here we see the ABC in Melbourne with the same headline. When will this propaganda end? Well, hopefully when the next ice age begins. More nonsense coming out from, well, the multinational corporations that are destroying our planet. Instead of corn and soy farming, they want to use lab-grown oil for the planet to save the earth, according to scientists. And they call it food without agriculture. These multinational corporations want to pump out toxic food to keep you satiated while big ag and big pharma rake in the bucks from your sickness. This is how sick we've become. I can't wait until a major solar flare knocks us back into the Stone Age. But before that happens, there are some beautiful things to witness on Earth, including the nor northern torrid meteor shower, which could produce extra bright meteors tonight, tomorrow, and the following evening. We just had the peak of the southern torrids about a week ago uh, on November 5th, and the dynamic duo has been overlapping in the night sky since mid-October. 
So the peak activity for the northern torrids will span a few nights before and after Sunday, according to the American Meteorological Society, which is tonight. So please get out, look towards Taurus, and take a look for some bolides. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon, support the work we do, and watch all of our podcasts commercial free in one place. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom. No, no.